a paper towel and a dirty magazine. That's all we needed to get. Ready? Hi, I'm Neil, and I'm here to show you how to use up all the shit in your cupboards that you might have bought once or twice, and uh, you know you're stuck for a meal, or whatever. What I'm gonna do today is kind of take on a like a paella or a jambalaya or something, something from the deep south with a bit of English influence going on, and uh, yeah, so let's get rolling. First thing, obviously, you want to do before you do anything is give your hands a good wash. I remember as well, cooking should be fun. You don't want to be, you know, shouldn't be shit and boring or terrifying. It's only going to make you feel a lot better. So get your beer on, get a glass of wine on, get some tunes on, and we can roll with that. Right then, so if I just go through what we've got here, we've got some chopped onion, some chopped mixed pepper. You can use any pepper, red, yellow, green, it's all good. We've got some peas out of the freezer, most people got them. 600 grams of lung grain rice. We're gonna hit it with some garlic as well, and then spices which are just found in the cupboard. Pretty much all of this we found we're gonna make nothing into something. We've got some ground ginger, some Cajun spice, some whole cumin, a tin of tomatoes, some oxo cubes, a bit of Louisiana hot sauce for the deep south inspiration, um, some fresh chili, parsley, and uh, so it's time to get our swirl on. For those who uh, don't really know how to get this or this, I'll just show you. So you want a sharp knife, obviously. Never be afraid as well to be afraid of the knife or afraid of the heat, because that's only going to get you fucking cut or burn, you know what I'm saying? Always have yourself a little plastic bag on the go as well. It's the best thing, you put all your shit in there that you don't want, tie it up in the bin, it's done out of the way. Happy days. So I've got a board here for meat, and a board here for veg, obviously keep them separate because you don't want to cross-contaminate whatever. All you're looking to do is, this bit of the pepper is actually inedible, you can't digest that. Well you can eat it, but you can't digest it, so it's best to Lamp that off. Then all you're looking to do is cut into three. We're gonna pan roast these and then cling film them over so it really intensifies the flavour, but we'll get back to them in a minute. So again, remove your white pith, clear any seeds. You can leave the seeds in, but they are quite spicy and we've got enough spice here to kick it on anyway. Shit in the bag, staying clean obviously, and again, just in half. Once more with the uh, orange pepper, remove in half. Job's a good one shit in the bin and again simple even my nan could do that right and so you want your onion kind of quite coarsely chopped because obviously it's going to be braised through the oven so if you finally chop it you're not going to have anything left important to give you a bit of texture i'm using spanish onion here because it's all i could find in the cupboard but you can use a, even a red onion normal cooking onion fine as well so skin off try and find out where the root was which is there Point that away from you, and then all you're looking to do is make several incisions down like that, then cut horizontally through, taking care not to cut through the bottom bit. Like that, and just down. So you've got your onion going on there. Obviously if you want it finer, you just make the incisions a lot closer, and you put more in when you're doing it horizontally. Right end. That, apart from the parsley which goes in at the end for colour and a little bit of flavour, is all the veg chopping we're doing today. So, you can fuck the board off. Job's a good one. All your shit's in there. Right then, so before we get onto the meat and that, we're going to start slow roasting these peppers. Want a nice high heat on the go, pan on. Leave that to sit for a couple of minutes. Nice and hot. And a bit of vegetable oil going on in there. And while that's working as well, we're going to light our other thing so we can start getting our other uh, pan warming on the go. At this point as well, always good to boil the kettle. Sorted. And like I say, all this kind of shit is built, well, you know, being built out of stuff that would be in your cupboard. Maybe you bought the spices for kind of a dish you've seen on TV or a dish in the uh, in a cookery book and you never know what to use them for after that. So get all that shit used up, it's all money. Right, and our pan should be hot enough now. 
So if you take this over here, what you want to hear is that sizzling, that crackling, and you know then that you're uh, fighting them. I just want to leave them, not mess around with them too much, leave them for roast. So here, I've got some back bacon. You can take the fat off if that's what you want to do, but with pork or with any meat, the flavour is in the fat, plus that's going to be fried off and rendered down anyway. So we ain't got to worry about that kind of thing. So all you want it in is kind of like some strips again, not too small. Because you don't want it to waste away to nothing when it's going through the oven. Jobs are good on. Let's have a look at our peppers over here, see what's going on. As you can see there, skins are just starting to blister. That's what we want, we want a bit more colour on them. So with the chicken, it's totally up to you whether maybe you want to leave it whole, or for this dish, I'm going to put it through. So a couple of nice chicken breasts there, probably about 10 ounce. So what I'm going to do with these is, to take the fillet off. Always try and buy free range chicken, but in all fairness, it's not that important anyway. They all go waffling on about it, but it's all shit. So I'm just cutting through the breast horizontally, so effectively you got two of the pieces. I want to keep this quite chunky again, because it's going through the oven. Alright, so we've got all our meats prepped now. That's obviously had chicken on it, so we get rid of that. Little tip as well, always stick a cloth under your board so your board don't slip. Save your fingers. Eat peppers man. Nice bit of colour on them, they're all starting to blister. So what we're going to do with them now is take them out of the pan. And what we do with these man is clean from them over because what happens is the peppers, the heat of the pan and the char on the outside will sweat and intensify the flavour. You can also do this on a barbecue or char grill pan. It works really well like that. Right then, so then, put them down, forget about them. Jobs are good. Put a bit of a low heat there. Look at boiling the pan, it's up to you what oil you use. Nothing wrong with vegetables, you can use olive oil, but you know, it's expensive. Okay, so we're going to take our onions, a slice of garlic, straight in. Good thing about this dish is as well, it's like a two pan dish. So, save someone standing at the sink washing up. Butter, I like to use willow, but you know, anything you want to use is good. It's got a good flavour, nice creaminess. In a pan as well, no ass or chuck it in there. Okay, onto the spices. It's important we cook the spices out, otherwise, you're going to have a grainy kind of horrible kind of texture on the palate, and you're not going to get the full. Uh, full flavour of them either. So while that's all sweating up, we cook these now. I'm adding about a teaspoon of whole cumin seeds. A couple of teaspoons of Cajun spice. Fennel seeds. Again, about a teaspoon. And you can change this, I mean, I'm trying to make this a bit South American, that kind of thing, but, well, not, not South American, kind of the deep South kind of thing going on. But you can do this the same as kind of a biryani, maybe add more curry kind of spices, or turmeric or gram masala, gram coriander, and it will work very well exactly the same. Plus I'm using chicken, you could use pork, pork loin, uh, monkfish will be good for this dish because it's uh, quite robust, you're not going to, um, it ain't going to break up and flake into nothing. We can add prawns to this as well, that will really make it kind of deep south. But anyway, so all that's, see how there's no colour on nothing, nothing's burning, nothing's frying, it's all just very, very gently sweating itself off. So we leave that now to cook out for a minute. An element that I did actually forget earlier, which is my bad, we've got some bird's eye chilies here, very spicy. Uh, depends on your palate and how you like your food, but I quite like mine quite spicy, so. I'm going to add two, and I'm not going to take the seeds out. You can add two yourself, and take the seeds out. It's the flavour that we want really, but that little bit of heat, 
just makes it more moorish. It gives you a good excuse to have a cold beer with it as well. So, chilium, 